Hey, thanks again for sending in questions uh, related to our recent sermons. As you probably know, we are in our uh, series in Mark. And this last week, we went through the portion of the narrative where Jesus heals um, a paralytic, forgives a tax collector, um, and then uh, speaks rather directly to the religious establishment. So the question comes in this week, um, when Jesus healed the paralytic, or before he did, he declared that the paralytic was forgiven. Um, and so the question is, uh, is that paralytic in heaven? You know, what? we don't know what happened the rest of his life. Uh, is this guy, did this guy become a Christian when Jesus forgave him? Or how could Jesus forgive him? Um, it, when, when the paralytic hadn't even said anything, he just uh, lowered from the ceiling and Jesus pronounces him forgiven. Um, obviously a lot to unpack there, much of which we will just have to assume. Um, and of course the ultimate answer of whether anybody is in heaven is, uh, is, is up to Jesus uh, himself. And we can't know definitively uh, anyone's salvation. But what we can know is uh, already in the book of Mark, we have seen multiple calls for repentance from both John the Baptist and Jesus himself, and that repentance is necessary uh, to, to enter the kingdom uh, or to be included in what God is doing. Um, we also know that God looks at the heart. Um, even back in the Old Testament, when, when God is selecting David as king of Israel, is he uh, humans look at exterior uh, appearances, but God looks at the heart. Um, in Romans 10, it is with our heart um, that, we, that we believe and we are justified, right? Um, and so there, there is an, uh, an internal faith which is required for salvation, um, and that yeah, most of the time is going to precede any other uh, outward expression of faith. And so what we would have to assume is that for Jesus to forgive someone, that that, that internal repentance has happened. Um, the same with the tax collector as well. Uh, they must be similar to Luke 18, um, when you know the, the Pharisee and the tax collector go up to the temple to pray, and the Pharisee says, I'm better than all these other people. And tax collector, the tax collector says, I just have mercy on me, oh God, I'm a sinner. Um, and Jesus says, it's, it's that guy, that's the tax collector that went home justified. It's a posture of our heart, uh, as we talked about in the sermon. You know, all we need is need. We need to really be crying out to God um, for, for, for mercy, for forgiveness. And that first, most of the time, uh, comes from our heart, which God can see and uh, God forgives um, as he sees it. And so it's an assumption that that was happening um, in the paralytic's heart, but it's a good assumption because God can see the heart, um, and it is with our heart that we believe and are justified, as Romans uh, 10 explains. Um, as far as whether the paralytic is in heaven, um, we, of course, believe that when someone is forgiven by God, you know, because of their repentance and faith and trust in Christ, that that person um, enters into the kingdom of God, receives God's spirit, becomes a child of God. Um, and with God's spirit living inside of them, um, that, they, that they walk with the Lord then, um, that the Holy Spirit living inside of them will continue to convict and uh, sanctify the person, draw that person closer to God, which of course is not a linear process, um, has lots of ups, ups and downs, has lots of repentance along the way. But ultimately, right, Philippians 1, 6, we believe that, uh, that God will complete the work that uh, he begins in anyone. Um, and uh, it, I, pretty undeniably that God uh, began a work in the paralytic, and so we do have confidence that uh, he will complete that work. Um, and paralytic um, eventually ended up uh, in eternity with God. So thanks for sending in the questions and for following along with our series. We will see you next time.